and glorify your mighty name. Merciful Jesus, we want to praise you and glorify your name. Holy Spirit, our sanctifier, who unites the Father and the Son, we want to praise you and glorify your name. Your word in Isaiah 25, verse 1 says, O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. Yes, Lord, you are the Lord of lords, King of kings. You are the Alpha and the Omega, and you are the beginning and the end. You are everything, O Lord Almighty. We praise your holy name. Let us praise the Lord with a shout of praise. We are here to praise you. Lift our hearts and say, We are here to give you the best that we can bring. And it is our life. Rising from our heart, everything within us cries, Abba Father, help us not to give you pleasure and delight. Heart and mind will say that I love you, Lord. We are here to praise you. Lift our hearts and say, We are here to give you the best that we can bring. And it is our love rising from our heart. Everything within us cries, Abba Father. Help us now to give you pleasure and delight. Heart and mind would say that I love you, Lord. Let us thank the Almighty God for the endless mercies each new day. Thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life, the breath we are breathing. We thank you for working with us throughout the day and watching over our going out and coming in. Your word in Thessalonians 5, verses 16 to 18 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all circumstances, whether they be good or bad, painful or joyful. Let us thank the Lord for everything that he has done for us and he is going to do for us and he will do for us. I come before you today And the one thing that I want to say Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord 
for all you've given to me. For all the blessings that I cannot see. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you. You Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done in my life. You took my darkness and gave me your light. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You took my sin and my shame. You took my sickness and healed all my pain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart. With a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now let us invite the Holy Spirit into our lives. Your word in Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we love you. Empower us. Help us to abound in hope and faith. Teach us the ways of God and take us closer to Abba Father and the Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding us, strengthening us, sanctifying us, and healing us. Let us invoke the Holy Spirit. Precious Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come, come into me now to touch and heal. Precious Spirit, come, Holy Spirit, come, come into me now and set me free. Oh, let my heart burn with love and love. Let us 
now worship the Lord Almighty with spirit and truth. Your word in Hebrews 12, verses 28 to 29 says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. Your word in John 4.24 says, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Let us surrender to the Lord and ask him to order our steps. Submit to the Lord, seeking to do his will each and every day, and have a willingness to serve him. Let us worship the Lord Almighty with... Come and worship. Come and worship. Come and praise Him, holy nature. Worship Jesus. Our Redeemer, He is Christ, King of Glory. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Our Redeemer, He is worthy, King of glory, come and worship, Could separate us now 
What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful life it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful life it is, nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Could not hold you, the waves are before you, you silence the voice of sin and grace. Heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you raised to life, to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal, now and forever our God reigns. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name of all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Rival. You have no equal, now and forever our God reigns. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name of all names. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Yes, so Sister Jessica, she's done. The praise and praise the Lord, glory to God. Thank you, Sister Diel. That was a wonderful praise and worship. Thank you so much for having Thank me today. Praise Thank God, you. all glory to God. So we have. <clears throat> Just a few more minutes to go. Let me listen to one more song and we'll begin with Sister Leela Morris. In the sea, measured out the universe, and you made me. Echoes of the voice that called the words to me, reach throughout the ages and then speak to me. My creator king, you know the 
Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. We'll now welcome Sister Leela Morris to begin sharing of the word. Good evening, Sister Leela. Welcoming you, Sister. Good evening, Sister Jessica. Can I be heard? Can you hear yes. me? Yes. Okay. Uh, may I have screen sharing, please? Yeah. Okay. So can you all see the screen? Yes, sister. Yes, yes sister. sister. All right. So uh, tonight, I am glad to be sharing with you uh, on this Saturday, prior to the precious season of Lent. So as you know, today is the 19th or the 18th, and beginning from the 22nd,
we are going to be entering into this very very powerful this very beautiful season of lent i want to share with you tonight that uh, you know the season of lent is actually meant to be a time of joyful preparation and so i'm taking this opportunity as we begin lent within another 3 days time so right from the 22nd of february until uh, we celebrate uh, the paschal mystery on the 9th of april we are into a, a beautiful season of grace and um, tonight i'm going to share with you some of the very very precious things that each one of us can do as we enter into this powerful season of lent uh so you know if you know the season of lent is going to last us for 40 days it's going to be a long time and i'm going to share with you that this time is a time in which we are being drawn to the heart of god and so like uh, it is said in the book of hosea chapter 2 and verse 14 i will speak face to face with her in the wilderness so this wilderness this time of you know sacrifice and various things that we are all going to do is meant to be a time in which we will come face to face with our god and uh, so through this season of lent just like it was in the the 40 years of wilderness that the old testament israelites went through the 40 days that jesus went through in the desert we are going to be uh, dying to sin but we are going to come to a beautiful time of precious meeting face to face with our god and so i'm going to share with you some of the things that we need to do lent is a time that has been given to us as it were on loan it's a lent time it's a season which god has given to us out of his goodness out of his graciousness and so tonight i am asking you to know that the word of god tells us and i am sharing with you straight from the scripture saint paul is saying i determine to know nothing among you except one thing and that one thing is christ jesus and him crucified he says i was with you in weakness and in fear in much trembling so the passage of scripture that i'm putting before you as i invite you to keep in mind this one thing as saint paul will say the one thing i need to know i quote it to you from 1 corinthians chapter 2 and verse 2 i decided to know nothing among you except this one thing christ and him crucified so you know it is a most beautiful mystery most beautiful reality that jesus has died and if we can spend this time this entire 40 days just meditating on the beauty the marvel of the reality that jesus christ was crucified and so saint paul will say and i want to say to you tonight i was with you in weakness and in fear in much trembling my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power so that your faith should not rest on the wisdom of men but on the power of god so one thing you and i need to know is christ christ crucified and his power 
Having said this, I am telling you that through this season of Lent, right from now, from the 22nd, until we finally celebrate Holy Week and the Paschal Mystery, the Easter day, I am inviting you to reflect on what the church tells us are the three theological virtues. So there is, if you can see on your screen, the virtue of faith, hope, and charity. So you know where this is taken from? I'm reading to you from um, St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, St. Paul is saying, verse 13, now the three of these abide, faith, hope, in some translations you'll have love, in some translations you'll have charity, but of these, the greatest is love. So let's ask ourselves through this season of Lent, may the Lord give us the grace to make every effort. What are the things you and I can do to grow in faith? You know, I'm sure there are things you and I are praying for, things that we are asking God to do in our lives. And what we need to do. Uh, some problem, you can hear? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. So uh, we need to ask God to give us that faith, that supernatural faith to know that there are the things that cannot be seen, many things that cannot be seen. And uh, the writer to the Hebrew says, faith is the assurance of things not seen. And so uh, it is the conviction of things hoped for. I'm reading to you Hebrews chapter 11 and verse one. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things yet unseen. So if there is something in your life that you have been yearning for, this is the time. This is the season of your life to grow in faith. The second is to grow in the virtue of hope, which again you have in this very verse of Hebrews chapter 11. There are things that we don't know why they are happening in our lives things that we wish for, God is about to do something new as you and I enter into a total abandonment of his will. And so I'm sharing with you that as you decide and I decide to know only one thing, and that is Jesus Christ and him crucified, let us make that decision. So I'm inviting you as you stand on the threshold of Lent, to grow in the three virtues of faith, of hope, and of course, of charity. And I'm going to put before you that, you know, we are told that there are pillars of Lent. And so our faith, hope, and charity will be strengthened. First, our faith through prayer. And you and I need to ask ourselves, and to become aware at this point of time, what are those things that we need to do? What are those ways that each one of us can grow in a life of prayer? So if you're not having a quiet time with the Lord, if you're not sitting with him every morning and picking up manna, from his feet, if you're not sitting before the blessed sacrament, let this 40 days be a time in which you grow in prayer. If you already have a quiet time, you already have a time in which you're sitting in prayer, make a decision, to spend a little more time before the blessed sacrament, to, to spend a little more time becoming aware of God's presence with you every moment of your life. Uh, Take the Lord's presence with you wherever you go. And that is how our faith is going to 
grow. When it comes to the virtue of hope, you know, the second pillar of uh, Lent is fasting. And um, I'm going to invite you to look afresh at your life and to see whether you are really yearning for the Lord. So while fasting is definitely, okay, and I say this very strongly, fasting is definitely making a sacrifice of food. We need to understand that the reason why we are fasting and the, the thing that makes our fasting far higher than just, you know, maybe a, a what do you say, a starvation or a, some kind of a dieting. No, it is a deep hunger for God. And therefore, our fasting and prayer have to go hand in hand. So you will see Jesus in, in Mark's gospel, and you will see Jesus again and again saying, you know, this kind of demon does not go away except by prayer and fasting. And so if there's some area of your life where you're struggling, area of sin, area of, you know, a battle, something that you, uh, you really want God to do in your life, I'm going to tell you, start fasting and praying. And through the season of Lent, maintain this fast and prayer, and you will find that God is going to do something far more than you can ever ask for or imagine. Besides prayer and fasting, there is that third Lenten pillar. And that pillar is the pillar of, as you can see on the screen, almsgiving. So constantly through the season of Lent, we will be reminded. And uh, you'll find this in Matthew's gospel. It is not a question of, you know, if you're fasting, if you're praying, uh, if you are doing alms. Uh, I have my Bible open. And in Matthew's gospel, uh, we have a teaching of Jesus. And uh, Jesus is saying, when you pray, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 6, when you pray, go to your inner room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in secret. So we need to ask the Lord for that grace, that through the season of Lent, it is not if you pray, we need to go into that inner room of our hearts find the Lord and he knows what we need and come to him in secret and then pray from our heart what Jesus taught us to pray. It is not about saying our fathers, but it is about coming to this relationship with the Lord, calling to him as Abba, saying, Father, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. And asking him, that he will give us the strength we need. He will help us to forgive our debtors. He will not lead us to temptation, but he will allow us to give him glory in everything. So if you look at Matthew's gospel again, the same passage that I have open in front of me, Matthew chapter six, uh, he, Jesus is saying in verse 16, straight after his teaching on prayer, he's saying, and whenever you fast, do this, 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 and the other. So we are called men and women after the heart of God <coughs> to be constantly making the effort to fast. And uh, I opened Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, because chapter 6 begins with beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed. And in verse 2, we have something about almsgiving. When you give alms, so I'm reading Matthew chapter 6, and you have a teaching on prayer and fasting and almsgiving. When you give alms, don't sound the trumpet, 
don't do as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may be honored by men. I say to you, they have their reward in full. When you give alms, do not let, let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your alms may be in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. So uh, a reminder, let us grow in this season in faith, hope, and charity as we commit ourselves. And this is a very, very beautiful opportunity as we are, you know, we've not yet started, but we are being reminded to do it right from the first time. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Let this Lent be special. One of the most beautiful practices of Lent is, you know, I said to you, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 2, we are going to ponder on Christ crucified. And uh, the church has given us this very, very beautiful uh, image of Jesus hanging on the cross. While we would love to see Jesus off the cross, and yes, God did raise him from the dead. And he is not presently hanging on the cross, but those sacred wounds of Jesus. I'm inviting you through the 40 days of Lent, contemplate the sacred wounds of Jesus. So the picture before you gives you the image of Jesus who was wounded, his Hands are wounded, and he extends those wounded hands. His feet are nailed to the cross. Let us just ponder. Not today alone, but every day. Every day through the, not even just through the 40 days of Lent, but every day of our lives on what our Savior, what our Redeemer bore out of love for us. His heart was wounded. His side was wounded. And out of that wounded side poured blood, precious blood, out of love for you and for me. He was scourged. He was, he bore those 39 lashes. He was crowned. And the thorns that pierced his head, they are a reminder to us of the deep love that Jesus carries for each one of us. So brothers and sisters, I am taking you to the, the beautiful passage from the Old Testament. A very, very powerful image. And I'm going to ask you, uh, please, during the season of Lent, throughout the season of Lent, Take the trouble, okay? Uh, Isaiah chapter 53 and verses 4 and 5. This is what we are told. So if you read verses 3, verse 3, Isaiah chapter 53, it says, He was despised. He was forsaken of men. A man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and like one from whom men hide their face, he was despised. We did not esteem him. But you know, the good news, verse 4 says, it is our griefs that he bore. And this is why we want to contemplate the wounded Jesus. It is our griefs that he bore on that cross. It is our sorrows that he carried. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was pierced through for our transgressions. Take time through this season of Lent and memorize and ponder on Isaiah chapter 53 and verses 4 and 5. Our griefs, our sorrows, our transgressions. It is our griefs that he bore. It is our sorrows that he carried. It is our transgressions for which he was pierced. He was crushed for our iniquities. And the chastening of, 
for our well-being fell upon him. By his scourging, we are healed. So as you yearn for the healing of God, ponder on what Jesus has suffered. Those five sacred wounds. So I said to you, one, Next year, that pencil is again. ponder on Christ crucified. Second, the three theological virtues and the three uh, pillars of our faith, the pillars of Lent. Now, I've come to the central part of tonight's teaching. All that Jesus did, all that he did on Calvary's cross is for your and my redemption. Beloved brothers and sisters, what Jesus has suffered, he has suffered for the sake of our sin. And the Catechism of the Catholic Church tells us that there are these seven capital sins, or what we call the seven uh, most, uh, as it were, central sins, the sins which engender every other sin that you and I commit in our lives. Uh, I want to, to put before you these capital sins and uh, there's a very easy way to remember. We have, uh, there is this code word. I'm sure I must have said this to you at some time earlier, but for those of you who have never heard me, and for those of you who have never pondered on the seven capital sins, by the way, you can make your confession, my dear brothers and sisters, simply looking at which of these capital sins are the cause for the things you do in your life. What are these capital sins? One, the sin of pride. So all of us say, of course, you know, I am so important. And pride is something that it happens. You know, we are human. But the word of God tells us, beware, God resists the proud. God gives grace to the humble. Before a fall comes pride. And so let us be guarded against pride in our life. You will find that many of the things we are doing in our lives, I have found this in my life, many of the sins we commit can be traced back to, this is all because of my pride. Even, you know, the sin of anger. Why, why do I find it so hard to forgive? Because I, I, me, myself, I have been injured. How could this one do this to me? So if we can trace back many of the sins in our lives, you know, many of the things we've done because we are uh, angry or because we are proud, and when we confess this pride and anger, we will be freed of many of those sinful actions that we are seeing in our lives. Amen? The third capital sin is the sin of lust. Lust is that sin by which we desire to satisfy our flesh, especially in the area of the sensual, maybe uh, if I may say the sexual area, but our desire to do what gratifies our flesh. So once again, this is one of the very deep sins that leads us into many, many of the wrongdoings that we are committing. And then, of course, there is the sin of envy. So you can see, not difficult to remember, next time you're going for confession, and through the season of Lent, ask the Lord, Lord, if there be any pride in my life, show it to me. Lord, where there is anger, reveal it to me. And sometimes you will find that you have even, some of us have a spirit of pride. And so everything we are doing 
you know, we can tr track it back to this pride and we need to resist and we need to surrender and we need to pray for deliverance from these sinful spirits in our lives. Then, of course, we may not like to hear this, but the Catechism of the Catholic Church tells us that gluttony, the great sin of gluttony is another capital sin. And I want to tell you that, you know, when you learn, when we learn, you and I, to deal with the sin of gluttony, we will also find that there is a lot of self-control in the area of our tongue, in the area of our gossip, our slander, our loose talk. And of course, definitely it brings health, it brings blessing, it enables us to actually fast. Today, many of us have given up fasting because we have found it convenient to say, you know, we are going to fast from this, that, and the other. Sure, please fast from evil words, fast from, uh, you, you know, jealousy, fast from everything possible, but don't stop real fasting from food. It costs you something, and there is tremendous blessing in that fasting. Then there is the sin of avarice. And avarice, in simple English, is the sin of greed. How many of the things we do in our lives are because we are dissatisfied, right? I want what somebody else has. And because I don't have, I, I uh, am desirous to get it. And because I want to get it, then I don't mind slandering, I don't mind telling lies, I don't mind doing whatever else. This is how uh, avarice becomes a very, very powerful means of sin, a powerful means by which we are taken away from the Lord. And finally, we have the, the capital sin of sloth, or uh, in simple English, the sin of laziness. And uh, it, it sounds very uh, simple or it sounds very uh, strong when we talk about sloth as a capital sin. But I want to share with you that many times we are not growing, even, even in our walk with the Lord, because we have simply settled for a lazy spiritual life. So take note, my dear brothers and sisters, pride, anger, lust, envy, gluttony, avarice, and sloth. You know, as Jesus hung on the cross, he gave us seven last words. And I'm sure at some time during this season of Lent, you will ponder on the seven last words of our Lord Jesus Christ. But tonight I'm telling you that as you struggle with sin in your life, and as you ponder on this precious Redeemer of ours, this God who becomes man and who allows himself to go through the passion and this excruciating death out of his love for you and for me, he spoke seven last words. And I'm going to tell you, I don't know if you've ever heard this before, but each of these seven last words deals with one of those capital sins. And so as Jesus hung from the cross on Calvary, he dealt with our pride. And how did he deal with our pride? You will hear Jesus crying out from the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus has emptied himself of everything. And in this moment, it is your sin and mine 
especially our pride that he has taken upon himself. And this is why he is totally cut off from the Father. And in this moment, if you and I will ponder these last words of Jesus, we will find tremendous grace and strength to deal with our own pride. I told you the second uh, capital sin is the sin of, you all remember? You are awake, no? Hello? Anger. Very good. I thought that uh, I'm alone here now. So the sin of anger Jesus deals with as he hangs on the cross when he calls out, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. And I always say, you know, I'm sure that those soldiers, I'm sure that the Jews who, um, who got Jesus crucified, they knew what they were doing. But maybe they didn't know fully that, you know, this is the savior of the world and, you know, they are putting to death an innocent man. Uh, but Jesus, of all people, could have held on to his anger. But in that moment, as he cries out to the Father, he gives us grace and he gives us wisdom to say, Father, forgive them, all those people who have hurt us, because they don't know what they are doing. And uh, this is a tremendous thing to ponder if you're struggling in the area of anger. Simply keep on asking Jesus for that grace, the grace that he had as he hung on Calvary's cross to offer forgiveness to those who were hurting him. The third sin is, of course, you heard the sin of lust. And Jesus, as he hangs from the cross, you know, as you ponder uh, the stations of the cross and we will walk the way of the cross, I believe. Many times, I love to do the way of the cross all through the year, many times. Uh, one of the beautiful things that Jesus uh, does is as he hangs from the cross, stripped, naked, he is saying to each one of you, to each one of us, son, behold, your mother. And he gives us Mary, the immaculate Mary, Mary to be our mother. When he says, woman, behold your son. And so if you're struggling with the flesh, you're struggling with the sin of lust, here is Jesus as he gives his last sermon from the pulpit of the cross, giving us grace to overcome sin. The sin of envy. So I told you pride, anger, lust, envy. You know, Jesus uh, spoke many words from the cross. But one of those words that he spoke from the cross, he spoke to the thief. And as he spoke to that good thief, he says to him, this day you will be with me in paradise. And uh, Bishop Fulton of revered memory will tell us, you know, uh, this thief, even as he hung dying on the cross, he stole paradise. And, uh, you know, if there's anything that you and I struggle with in terms of envy, I hope that we will be envious of this man who, even in his dying breath, he is repenting. And I wish that I would hear the Lord say, this day, you will be with me in paradise. So, uh, with all our struggles, if Jesus would forgive that sinner, the thief who would ask pardon, 
who would seek repentance, then I think that as we ponder on the last words of Jesus, we will have the grace to also overcome our uh, moments of wanting what is not supposed to be ours, being jealous of someone else's good name, someone else's good things. Let us ask for that, uh, you know, uh, wisdom to deal with this sin in our lives. Of course, I don't think I'm going to need to tell you much, but as Jesus hung from the cross, he gives us an understanding of how to deal with our, uh, you know, the voice of the enemy that constantly says, are hungry, hey kya? And the constant wanting to satisfy our uh, stomach. Jesus, as he hangs from the cross, he says, I thirst. And beloved brothers and sisters, I beseech you that as you hear Jesus from the cross saying, I thirst, may each one of us, may each one of us really be willing to fast, to set aside all our desire, just to eat for the sake of eating. You know, we hear today this thing, oh, I'm a foodie. Let us become aware that what the Lord wants of us as we die to ourselves is to hunger and thirst for righteousness is to thirst for souls, is to thirst for his kingdom. Amen? So, brothers and sisters, I am sharing with you, we've looked at pride, we've looked at anger, we've looked at lust and envy, we've looked at gluttony. There is, of course, the sin of avarice. And as you uh, ponder on, you know, this desire to have and to have more, and to have more, and we are never satisfied. Greed, always wanting more. And I want you to hear Jesus as he says from Calvary's cross, into your hands, I commend my spirit. And sometimes I ponder and I think that Jesus said these words to us. He gave us his spirit. Yes, he returned his spirit, his earthly spirit to the Father, but he also offered us his spirit as he hung from the cross so that we might know what is it that really makes for life? What is it that we really need to have? And finally, last but not least, as Jesus hangs from Calvary's cross, he deals with the sin of sloth. The sin of sloth or laziness, as I said to you earlier, is dealt with very powerfully when we uh, understand that Jesus is uh, saying from Calvary's cross, it is finished. He says, it is finished. Are you seeing? Okay. So here is Jesus's last sermon. And I'm repeating what I said from the beginning. One thing that we need to ponder on, three virtues that we need to uh, follow, the five sacred wounds that we need to ponder upon, and the seven capital sins that Jesus deals with. There's some disturbance. And we ask for that grace. Finally, beloved brothers and sisters, as we uh, begin to ask,
for grace from the Lord, there is something that God is going to do in each one of our lives. You know, as we uh, ponder on Jesus hanging on Calvary's cross, Calvary's cross, he is dealing with our pride, our anger. I am telling you that there is one thing that each of us needs to know and each of us needs to deeply yearn for in this season of Lent. So if you turn with me to St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, so Galatians chapter 5, and uh, I'm reading to you what uh, St. Paul is saying. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. So as I said to you, this whole season of Lent is not meant to be a time of bondage. It's not meant to be a time of, you know, wearing us out and tiring us. It is meant to be a time of us being set free. So he is saying, Galatians chapter 5, if you have your Bible, you can read. It was for freedom that Christ sets us free. Therefore, keep standing firm. You know, we have 40 days ahead of us. And each day, we have to diligently stand firm. Do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery, the yoke of sin. Behold, I, Paul, say to you, if you receive circumcision, Christ will be of no benefit to you. And I testify again that every man who receives circumcision, that he is under obligation to keep the law. You have been severed from Christ. You are, you who are seeking to be justified by the law. You have fallen from grace. So, beloved brothers and sisters, you know, the whole purpose for which Christ Jesus came, the whole purpose for which he died, the purpose for which he suffered is so that we may know the grace of God. And uh, St. Paul goes on to say, I'm reading a little further, you know, he's uh, telling them about the importance of uh, looking into their hearts and in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 13, he says, you were called to freedom. Don't turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh. But through love, serve one another. And then he goes on to tell us something. And so you can ponder this throughout the season of Lent. If you bite, okay, I'll read to you Galatians chapter 5, verse 14. The whole law is fulfilled in one word. In the statement, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Stop for a moment and look into your lives. I'm looking into my life. I guess it's so easy to talk. It's so difficult to walk. It's so difficult to walk the talk. It's so difficult to do what the Lord wants us to do. He is saying, you will call to freedom. But don't turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh. Through love, serve one another. And then he says, you know what? The whole law is fulfilled in one word. In the statement, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And then... Uh, I'm on Galatians chapter 5. I hope some of you at least have your Bibles open. In verse 16, he says, I say, walk by the Spirit. And you will not carry out the desires of your flesh. For the flesh has set its desire against the Spirit. And the Spirit is against the flesh. 
And these are constantly in opposition to each other. And then he says, if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident. So he's telling us there is immorality, there is impurity, there is licentiousness, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery. And I'm sure we can see ourselves in all of this. Enmity, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger. All of you have? I'm sure all of us have moments where we uh, find ourselves falling into the sin of anger, jealousy, disputes, dissension, faction, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and St. Paul is saying, of these things I forewarn you as I have forewarned you that those who practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now I wish Galatians chapter 5 and verse 21. And now comes <clears throat> what we are familiar with, I hope. The nine fruit of the Holy Spirit. So he says, you know, all these things, if you do, they are sin. They are the fruit of the flesh. You will not inherit the kingdom of God. But, you know these? Love, joy, peace. Patience, kindness, goodness. Faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You know, many times when I'm sitting down to pray, or many times when I'm uh, walking and praying, I just keep on saying these nine fruit of the Spirit. And uh, I want to tell you that, you know, when we do this, we also uh, have a lot of opportunity to think where we are in our walk with the Lord. If you don't have love, St. Paul will say we are nothing. And you can take each of these fruit of the spirit. If we say we are Christian and we are mournful, we are sad, we are sorrowful, we cannot find joy in our lives. We are not able to look to the Lord and be radiant and um, joyful at all times then we don't have the Holy Spirit and his presence evident in our lives. The fruit of the Spirit is one. And it is seen in our love and our joy and our peace. The way we reach out to one another. The way we bring peace into the lives of others. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, as the season of Lent dawns upon us, we just want to thank God for drawing us into the wilderness, for drawing us to get fruit even in the desert. The fruit of patience. Think of all those difficult people. You know, we want to sometimes pray and we want to ask God, please take them out of our lives. But I believe that God always brings someone or the other. If you're really walking the way of the Lord, he's bringing someone or the other into your life through home. He's teaching you and me patience. And thank God for that brother or sister. Thank God for that neighbor or work colleague through whom you are learning patience. Yes, there are people who are unkind, people who are rude, people who are all the time doing the wrong things. And you have opportunity. Rejoice for the opportunity he is giving you to be kind. To reach out with love, to reach out with generosity, to reach out with goodness to such people. So through this season of Lent, look for the opportunities to grow in the fruit of the Holy Spirit, of love, joy, as well as peace, not just in word, but think sincerely in your heart, which of these fruit is missing in my life? And ask the Lord, help me to grow. Love, joy, and peace. Patience, kindness, and goodness. And then, of course, we have a little more difficult things. Faithfulness. 
you know we all start out well and then we go through moments where we uh, we fail yes it happens to all of us and god is asking us to grow and to commit ourselves tonight i want to honor you okay each one of you who make the sacrifice to be awake for the night to support one another and to yearn for god's voice ask for that grace of faithfulness ask for the grace of gentleness and i'm going to challenge you especially in your home maybe it's towards your spouse it's towards your children it's towards your parents aged parents you know it's so easy to be rough and to be rude and to be uh <coughs> brash in the things we say because you know they are there and anyway they they have to tolerate us sometimes we are challenged most in our homes especially in this area of gentleness and of course finally the fruit of self control so brothers and sisters if you have been listening we have what is that one thing that we want to know christ and him crucified take a moment to tell the lord please give me that deep understanding that deep knowledge of what it means to know nothing else but christ and christ to spite as you move through the season of lent let us beg from the lord to deepen within us the image and likeness of jesus through those three theological virtues faith hope and charity and if you remember if you've been listening then that faith hope and charity will come as we commit ourselves to the the practice of fasting of alms giving and of charity then of course you have i asked you and i'm going to do this i always do this and i find it very very powerful take time take time to look at a crucifix take time to ponder the wounded hands the wounded feet the pierced side the crowned head of jesus his broken and bruised body and all that brings the power of the precious blood alive for you and for me and then i told you about the seven capital sins we are asking for that grace from the lord the grace to uh, grow in dealing with our pride our anger our lust our envy in dealing with our gluttony our uh, avarice and our sloth of course we are going to remind ourselves of the seven last words of jesus <clears throat> and i'm sure that the more you ponder on them it has helped me amazingly we will grow to be more and more like jesus finally we pray that those nine uh fruit of the spirit may be uh deepened within our lives so take a moment pause and let us bring our lives to the lord tonight of our gracious and loving father i want to thank you and i want to praise you for this precious saturday night i want to thank you lord for the privilege you give us to come into the heart of your son jesus thank you lord for calling us in the stillness of this night to listen for your word and lord i want to pray your special blessing upon each one of these brothers and sisters who are yearning for your word who have opened their hearts to listen to teaching after teaching 
to the word of God, your word broken and fed to them. May your word become flesh in each one of our lives. Father, I pray tonight that as we move towards this wonderful season of grace, that our hearts may be drawn into the desert where we will find the power of the cross, where we will find the power of fasting, of prayer, of almsgiving, where we will know the beauty of the passion of Jesus and where we will be able to allow every one of our sins to be nailed to the cross of Calvary. Father, we pray that as this season of Lent progresses, you may come around and you may find the fruit that you are looking for. May we open our hearts to the spirit as you give us love, joy, and peace, patience, kindness, and goodness, faithfulness, faithfulness in all that you want us to do, faithfulness in all the practices of prayer and of your word and of the things of your kingdom, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Send us your grace, send us your spirit. In Jesus' precious and matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Remember, most gracious Virgin Mary, never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly to thee, Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To thee we come, before thee we stand, sinful, sorrowful, O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions. But in thy mercy, hear and answer us. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Did you all have a problem seeing the slides? Yes. 
no no it was okay so ah in the we, we, we were not able to see all the you know there was one slide which was fixed ayyo okay anyway i will send it to you all i'm so sorry one minute huh? yeah that's what i i was just wondering like you know because there was one slide which was just fixed on one you know page. what can you see now yes okay now ah can see that uh, pyramid one ah. oh, so this is the summary of what i shared okay i shared one thing to know okay i don't know why but we couldn't see all this slide yeah how sad generally we see all space also this time it was not there my face is there ah uh, yeah but then uh, when you were saying generally you know a small space comes on top with your uh, presentation uh so no that was not important i'm disappointed that you all didn't get to see the slides oh, but uh, we have it was very clear we had your uh, praise god praise the lord god bless you all bless you too. it was a uh, good uh, talk on just before the lens yeah maybe all grow and be blessed Thank you, Sister Leela. You're welcome. God bless you, Sister. This was the slide which was used.